try to speed up some things that we know that has to be done before winter. Namely, we know people are going to be left in this area. From Sheridan to MacArthur, from uh, Mapu King Drive to Jefferson. We know those people are going to be left, even if they clear out from Sheridan back to Cump Boulevard. So what we're trying to do is address what is going to be done in this area where the people are going to be left. Some of these houses are inadequate, uh, basements are caving in, roofs need repair, and we have a lot of homes that I don't think is going to be uh, feasible for habitation this winter for people to live in. So I'm thinking about uh, what we can do to probably speed up the progress, uh, to do something to motivate the city to make a move. You see, you can't start repairing houses in January. If you're going to repair them, you've got to do it before the weather sets in. So this is the reason for this very, very, I would say, uh, uh, rushed meeting. I've been talking with Mr. McKnight for the last two months on this issue. The reason I'm doing this is because I am not only a resident of Southtown, I'm also 14th Precinct Committee. And the 14th Precinct takes in most of Southtown, which is going to be left. It's, uh, I would say the, the reason for this meeting, if I had to make a uh, headline or topic on, is the people left in Southtown after the Amcor track is developed. People left in Southtown after the Amcor track is developed. The city and the government have commitments to the people in this area that I'm speaking of. Let's take our captions camera and take a look at Southtown. Certainly, 2nd Street will never look the same as we see a good friend of ours uh, leaving today. Uh, yes, home is where you hang your hat. And as we see the, the last house here on 2nd Street being removed and residents moving out, we're going to move around Southtown today and take you with us and see some of the housing stock that Brother Grubbs has talked about. We're going to go by his house and pick him up and see if we can't get him to go with us. And so we can share with you a, a vivid portrayal of some of the real life problems confronting those folk who are currently residing in Southtown and look forward to a very devastating winter. Bob Grubbs, uh, as I leave my house going to the uh, van where Mr. Banks is, we on, we're going on a tour of Southtown uh, to see these houses that uh, I've been talking about for some four or five months now, and we must do something before winter sets in. As you see this house here at 511 West 3rd Street, which was been vacated about two months, the city has bought the house, the people have been relocated, and this is the, what's left after two months. You see, it looks like the floor might be giving away there. Yes, the floor is giving away there, and it's hazard to kids that might be playing in this area, and they might run a foot through the floor, break a leg, or turn an ankle, uh, suffer some other, some other kind of injury. Uh, this should be corrected, uh, should be, this house should be demolished and uh, did away with because it's very hazard. As you notice in, my, uh, in the picture, you might see a house next door to it. If not, there is a house next door. And uh, if this house should catch a fire, it both would burn. So uh, what I'm saying is the city should, uh, when they relocate people after a few days, the house should be demolished. Okay, as, as we leave, 
um, this particular house at, at, at 511, which is you can see is uh, right in the, I guess, the back door of uh, the Amcor and in, in, in clear view of downtown. As you, as you talk about the health hazards and the potential danger for youngsters, I like this board with the nails, looks like it could come falling down on somebody any minute. Uh, if the city owns these properties, uh, who would be responsible if somebody did get hurt? Uh, the city would be responsible for this because uh, this house is no longer uh, in the uh, records. It's at the uh, county courthouse as being owned by a resident of Southtown, this uh, city property. What about these weeds that look, uh, you, you're about six feet tall and they're over your head. Uh, the city is supposed to uh, uh, take care of these weeds and all all of Southtown of houses that have been uh, bought by Southtown by uh, the city of Peoria. Uh, okay, what do we have here? We're back on Third Street. This is a dead tree that I reported to the city, and I know I went to the right source to have the uh, tree cut down or removed from. Uh, it's very it's dead. It could fall on a car passing by, and in the background uh, in a previous uh, council meeting. Uh, it was brought out by uh, my wife that uh, these trees that you see here are being used as a latrine for the people that come down and drink in this area. Uh, well, latrine is a word that we use in the Army, but it's a, it's a toilet. <laughs> well, I noticed your wife, she also complained about the, the drinking and the, and the trash because of the absence of security and the absence of neighbors. I guess we have... Uh, some of the kind of trash and the drinking that she talked about. Yes, uh, if you see here, this is a lot of trash, debris, or what you may call it. Uh, trash cans have been put in this area after I tried for two years to get some put in, but uh, the people that come down don't even put the trash in a trash can. If you see this is accumulation of a lot of uh, beer cartons and uh, etc. Okay, now you talked about the winter and the lack of uh, energy efficient homes, storm doors, storm windows, this kind of thing. Are these some of the kinds of uh, housing conditions that we can expect to find in just a few or more than a few? Well, this is, uh, I would say, uh, percentage-wise in South Town, you might have 40% uh, or better of houses that really are uh, beyond repair. Uh, is that a foundation problem? Yeah, that's where a basement has collapsed some three or four years ago. <laughs> You see, the man that lives there is not able to uh, re put uh, put it back in like it was, uh, to put a new basement in. So he did the next next best thing. He had to block it off with what he had: bricks, old anything he could find to stop air from coming in. Uh, you talked about high utility bills. I imagine with uh, and I, and here again we see some foundation problem there. Um, what do you what do you think that does uh, to the utility bill? I mean, the the, the absence of the storm doors, those kind of things. Uh, how much is that costing the residents in South Town? You think? Well, a house like this, Mr. Banks, uh, it probably would cost uh, somewhat in the near figure of maybe four hundred dollars a month for the energy uh, supply to heat this house. What about the danger here? Well, this is really. Uh, very hazard. Uh, now, as we approach this house, Mr. Banks, you recall, uh, you didn't think anybody lived in this house, but I take a survey of the area quite frequently. And you see, uh, as we uh, approach this house, there's two women came out of the house. And uh, it just looks like uh, you would be right, nobody lived there, but it does. Well, in some cases, we have no windows at all here. Uh, I, I just wouldn't even want to imagine what or that could mean this winter. Well, if you have no windows at all, Mr. Banks, you can't stay there. So these people are going to have to go to somewhere. Uh, it, it might have to be that the city might have to put them up in uh, Pier Marquette. Uh, they might be sleeping in the hall at City Hall, but they can't stay here. I mean, uh, and they don't have any money to pay rent. Uh, that's just a fact. What do we have? What do we have here? Well, this is a house. <laughs> you wouldn't believe it, this is a house. <laughs> and uh, you can see there is no... Uh, togetherness at all there near the uh, facial or the uh, uh, soffit of the house there. Uh, it's all been deteriorated. Uh, this is a house that we spoke about at a, at a different view on 6th Street where the ladies were coming out of the house. And uh, at the top you see there's no window. Uh, 
something has to be done. Uh, these people have to abandon the house, and where would they go? As I said, they have no money, so the, the city hasn't relocated them, so I, I imagine they would turn to the city for a place to stay this winter. Uh, I'm, I'm seeing now that the, the energy efficient rehab problem is a, is a very serious one. And uh, we're going to show a few more shots here before we break. And uh, we'll be back to discuss the problem in Southtown uh, shortly. As we continue to see uh, problems in the exterior uh, of the houses in terms of roof problems, leaks, air infiltration, all of those things that's going to, I mean, no windows at all. Um, these are the kind of problems that could, in fact, result in somebody freezing to death, couldn't it? Uh, that's right. Uh, I don't want to cut you off, but this sign here, this is an interesting one to me. Can you tell me the history behind this one right quick? Yes, again, this is a house was, uh, you see, was posted here by the city in restoration, uh, where restoration appears on the sign. It is aimed to restore these houses, I mean, move them to a different area, somewhere near the 700 uh, block on 6, 5th and 6th Street. Uh, Mayor Carver uh, started this project. Uh, he's the one recommended this project, and these houses were supposed to be moved to location with about 10 more houses made a little village like seen in Southtown. Now, are we still paying for insurance, maintenance, and security on these properties? Yes, because as long as it's city property and has to be maintained, you notice there's a fence around the property, and uh, that fence costs quite a bit of money. More on Southtown right after this. This, uh, I'm, I'm Mary Brad, and this article that I'm about to read to you uh, was stated on Wednesday, September 4th, 1985. Mayor Jim Maloof was so touched by the citizens of South Town that he wants the city to try to relocate everyone in the redevelopment area, even if the city must fire the money to do it. I think this council has got to do something, even if it means going into debt to do it. And I don't mean next year, or the year after, Maloof said. He told two dozen or more people who attended a public hearing on South Town that City Hall, at the City Hall Tuesday, that he was deeply moved by their testimony. As he was throwing out ideas, Maloof also offered to recommit hotel, restaurants, and amusement taxes that uh, underpin the financing of the Peoria Civic Center. He said $500,000 of the money could be used to relocate South Town residents. Somehow, some way, I have to offer you my commitment. But first, I have to have some more information, Luke said. He asked Redevelopment Director Michael McKnight, how many people are left in the primary section of South Town and how much would it cost to move them? The night said there are 40 to 45 occupied structures and it takes about $1 million to move 25 families. The night said the city could begin to relocate South Town residents with a promise $2 million from the State Bill of Illinois program as soon as the check got here. What keeps us from borrowing that $2 million so we can get these people out of there, Maloof said. Effectively, nothing, said City uh, Manager James Dayton. Dayton said the council could have, would have to authorize a new policy to borrow the money because South Town has been a day as you go project. And Dayton warned that the city probably would end up issuing general obligation notes, which means it would have to raise the tax levy if the Bill of Illinois financing falls through. 
you'll be borrowing funds for repayment against tax levies, he said. The crowd was with Malou, loudly whispering, amen, as he proposed ways to aid the South Town neighborhood. The audience opened the public hearing by roundly criticizing the city's administration for dragging its feet on the project. And you started it, so finish it, said Mary Francis Grubbs, 7 Eleven and Third. Grubbs uh, said that she was disgusted by the action of the people who came to South Town from other areas of theory for uh, smoking and drinking and love making on her block. And they were your children and my friends' uh, uh, children who come down here in the fancy cars, she said. Then you have the nerve to sit and tell us to wait another three or four years in this mess? What's the problem? It isn't World War II you got to decide, said Al Fight of the South Side Home Improvement Association. Show guts. These people, and indeed the entire community, were promised better than this, said Tim Burchett, leader of the South Town Committee of Forward Peoria. A grassroots citizen start an effort started by Malou. It's an insufficient answer to say these problems were caused by the time. Gretchen suggested a three-part plan. First, use one part, five million dollars or more of the two million in the bill, the Illinois money, to relocate people. Second, the funds should be used for relocation that can be covered by current funds, not just as a backup. Third, establish a definite deadline for relocating all South Town residents. These people have been held conscious to the development of Civic Center Plaza long enough, he said. Civil rights activist John Gwynn said he agreed with the city officials that commercial development and an expanded tax base were important, but tax base is not more important than human beings. By lovers of the South Side Improvement Association had admitted that angry residents nearly disrupted the meeting to make a point of their dissatisfaction, and that there may be trouble unless something is done before the end of the year. If there is trouble in Peoria, there will be no big conference here, he said. There will be no need to develop a riverfront because who's going to come to the riverfront if there's problems? Quite echo. They want to come here if we have trouble, if we have to raise hell. While the crowd supported the mayor's suggestion to borrow money, other council members screamed at the potential of higher taxes. Um, I go ahead and First District Councilman James Pope, who represented the South Town, said that said many of his relatives live there and he thinks the time has come to do something. He proposed that all Bill of Illinois funds be used for relocation efforts. However, Pope didn't commit himself to borrowing money. I also feel, as far as I'm concerned, the city council must market and must bring in some new taxes, folks said. I think we need to push to find out how soon the Bill of Illinois funds will be here so we don't have to go and borrow money. Other council members were more empathetic in refusing to open the city up to a possible tax hike. I suppose some of the statements I have made concerning South Town sound somewhat cautious, said Third District Councilman Clement P. Drees. But that's not the only ones who have to put up with the thieves and, some, and the hookers and the drug uh, pushers and the pimps. Drees said he had watched people in his district lose their houses because of the economy and get nothing in return. At the same time, he is approving $34,000 for one of these fortunate enough to be relocated out of South Carolina. We're talking about putting that on the back 
of people who can't afford any more taxes, he said. You have to understand, there are people who are going through the same thing all over the city. Spectators, if that's sick, and no, they are not as Judy spoke. At March, Councilman Ben Eunice proposed his own plan for South Town, but borrowing money didn't figure in yet. To me, the worst thing we could do would be to raise taxes, he said. I don't ask, I did not ask to raise taxes. I only asked how the money could be raised for Luke cut in. Eunice proposed that $50,000 of the bill of Illinois money be used for a more error. Police patrol, $450,000 to spend in relocating residents, and the remaining $1.5 million be used to develop a 20 house subdivision. I sincerely think the thing that doing this, rather than paying the whole $2 million for relocation, would be our best step, said Hughes, a long time advocate for South County finances. Second District Councilman Roger. Workmen agreed that taxes should not be raised because the economy is so fragile as a bunch of eggshells, but said a new subdivision would not be the best route. We've got houses all over the city, he said. Fourth District Councilman Ron Ullman traced some of the history of the project, knowing that several projects had been accomplished, including the name Drift. Heartland and the landmark departments. However, he said, the major financing sources keeps falling through from the utility tax in 1967 to the federal financing in the mid 1970s to the tax increment financing that underpin the current plan. Um, said the council should look for alternative, uh, for alternate financing method at its upcoming budget section. Thank you, Ms. Grubbs. That is the article in the paper of September, what day? 16? Yeah. Uh, September 4, 1985. September 4, 5th, 1985. 1985. So this has been over a year ago. I just want to, I wanted the people in this area to know what was discussed in the council that particular at that particular uh, council meeting. My name is Oliver Williams and I live in the 800 block of 4th Street. Uh, one of the things that I would like us to focus on is the attitude of the city. I noticed there are a lot of questions like, why don't the city do this? Why don't the city do that? I had a conversation with Mr. McKnight. Uh, he explained to me his position. Mr. McKnight, and I quote him, said that as far as he was concerned, that the good of the city had been done as far as relocating the people. And he explained to me what he meant. He was saying that the majority of the people in the South Town area had been moved out and that that qualified their program as basically being completed and that if people did complain that they were being unfairly taken care of that they could also bring in other people saying that since they had been relocated that they were satisfied and that his basic line was that because that the majority of the people had been relocated that the people that were left are not a major concern and I believe him. <laughs> and I have a personal problem of my own that I need help and assistance with. In March of 1985, the city council passed a program where they would help residents in the South Town area renovate their property. When I went for the help for renovation, I was told if I waited until that program was passed, that the program would increase from $1,500 to $6,500. At the time I applied, 
our furnace was not working. This was in the year of 85. We went a whole year without a working furnace with two small children. They were now four years old and 18 months. When they did finally approve our loan, it took an excessive time to get it going. The point that we are at now, I have a contract signed with the city for $6,500 for our work that was supposed to be done. The contractor defaulted on the loan. The city left me hanging out there. We now have a leaking roof, work incompleted, and the city gave me a book indicating that we owe $6,500 all of the money which we did not use. And when I approached them, Mr. McKnight will not talk to me. Mr. Dayton will not talk to me. They're telling me now that it, I am up on my own. I assume to get my own attorney to pursue the case against the city. When I went to the city, our house was free and clean. The city now has a lien on my house for $6,500. Work has been stopped, and they refuse to talk to me. <coughs> Where can I go get assistance for this, Mr. Eunice? Well, I don't know, Mr. Williams. Yes. The contractor got going and left on it. The contractor got the $6,500 already? Uh, I do have a contract. And the way the contract was rolled up, payments would be made out in two installments. There was two phases of the work. There was an exterior phase of the work, and there was an interior phase of the work. The interior phase of the work was completed. Payment was made out. The exterior of the work, there was a problem. The city paid Shirt Lumber Company their portion of the money that was due. I still have an uncompleted project, and we are now liable for the $6,500, and the work has not been completed.